Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, August 11th. So we have the moon in Scorpio all day, which of course is bringing on the feels. It's bringing on the intensity. It's bringing the detective hat to the scene. We have some questions. We're looking for answers. We're looking to unearth a lot of the shadow parts, the heavier mental plane ideas, the heavier emotions, if you will, that are kind of keeping us stuck, stagnant in this particular juncture. Now also keep in the back of your mind that although the fixed water energy of Scorpio is nobody's favorite for the moon to be in, it is a much better feeling than the last two days. Why is that? Well, because the last two days we have the moon, not only in this Libra and energy pop off with that south node throwing us all the way back to old karmic situations, old heaviness, old pain, old trauma, but the moon was void for an exceptionally long time, which of course adds to the uncertainty. It adds to the instability. It adds into the anxiety, which of course we are happy to get away from just a tad, even though we're making major moves, major changes, major transformations to our inner realm, to our perspective, to our understanding, to our thoughts, our ideas and emotions. So with the moon and Scorpio, we are doing the work. We're doing the work that is needed in order to make a major change. We also have to understand that we are building towards the first quarter moon that will be popping off in Scorpio energy here on the 12th. And so that build up, we have to expect that things are going to get intensified, that we're going to be illuminated to conflict, to tension, to those shadow parts of self in order for us to resolve them, repair them, heal them, come to an action point, a decision point on what it is that we need to do from here. So with all of that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of those aspects are going to involve the moon. The moon in Scorpio energy going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. Of course, Saturn is retrograde, so all of these energies are internalized in order for us to create better boundaries within ourselves, especially figuring out what it is that we actually believe to be true what we believe to be possible. That's where that Pisces energy comes from. So this is water on water action, but it's not happy go lucky water. It's also not negative dark dank water. It is just kind of chill water, meaning we have the opportunity to observe. We have the opportunity to see where it is that we're getting caught up, hooked up on old trains of thought, old energy dynamics, old situations and circumstances, where it is that we can clear those particular perceptions away just with a change of mind and a change of heart and where it is that we can start building a better, stronger, more supportive foundation that of course is going to lead us into really seeing where we can achieve new goals, new visions, new dreams. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in this Virgo energy, helping us to analyze and reevaluate our happiness, our joy, our safety, security, stability, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned and finances. Now, Virgo energy is helping us to break things down, focus in on the problems in order for us to fix them. And Venus in this Virgo energy is going to be making a very harsh interaction with that North Node in Aries energy. The North Node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to show us where it is that we need to be a little bit more independent, a little bit more individualized. Why? Because we get to know thyself when we are alone, when we are in our own power, when we don't have the influence and impact of other people's thoughts and opinions really pushing us in a way that, of course, our higher self would prefer us not go. And so Venus interacting with this North Node, we're having a little bit of a problem on seeing our path forward, seeing our wants, needs and desires clearly. We're having an issue understanding how it is that we're supposed to start stepping forward in a new path in a new direction. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are kind of, you know, losing sight of where it is that change needs to happen. It's just this Virgo energy needs to be well thought out, well calculated, and we're not about to make any moves. We're not about to share any of our emotions, our wants, needs, or desires outside of us until we have a clear plan, a clear strategy for us to actually put into play. 
the moon in Scorpio then going to be making a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, is in his place of power in this Pisces energy. He is also retrograde, which means that we're having to deal with life as it is and not for the way that we wished it would be. This has a huge impact on where it is that we're coming up with new goals, new visions, new dreams, but where we also have to clean up the loose ends of the past before we can double down and really commit to building something new. Emotionally speaking, the moon in Scorpio, very intuitive, very sensitive, again, doing the shadow work to unearth the blockages, the challenges that are preventing us from moving on. Neptune, of course, in his place of power, turning on all the feels, turning on high levels of intuition for us to remind ourselves what it is that we're fighting for, what it is that we need to make a change, a transformation in, in our realm in order to break free from the old construct and actually start building towards something new. We could have some very strong downloads, some insight, some aha moments pop off that will help us put the heaviness behind us and really have us orient more into this path, into this goal, into this target for the future. The moon is then going to make a harsh interaction with that north node. So again, with our detective hats on, we are kind of doing the work within ourselves to understand where we're resisting the change, where we're actually the problem where we're holding on, where we're refusing to let go, especially to old grudges, to old pain and trauma. Again, the Scorpio energy transforms the soul and spirit through death endings and closures in order for a renewal, a resurrection, a rebirth to actually take place. So it's kind of like, emotionally speaking, we're at a gridlock. We want to move on, move forward, but there's just something alive and well still within us that needs to die. This particular energy should illuminate that particular aspect of self. And once we know it, once we can see it, once we can feel it, we can attempt to heal it. The moon is then going to sextile Venus. So we love Scorpio and Virgo energy working together. Of course, the moon and Scorpio, Venus in this Virgo energy. We have the detective hat on in Scorpio energy. We are intensely passionate about figuring out how to break free from some of the constructs that have a deep grip on us. The Virgo energy, again, analyzing, critiquing, reevaluating, dissecting all the smaller parts, the smaller parts of our physical realm, because Venus, of course, is the physical realm, our physical bodies, our routines, our day to day life. It is our relationship dynamics. It is our financial situation. She's all about her worth her value. And that comes in the form of how she's feeling about herself and how that spills over and really affects how she feels worthy and deserving of the things that she wants to, of course, manifest. So emotionally speaking, we are very intense focusing in on where it is that we could grow, where it is that we could make a change, where it is that we could transform. Ideally, this is us getting a plan, getting a strategy together on where it is that we would like to go from here. We're going to get a little bit of help with this. The moon in Scorpio making a positive interaction with Mars. Mars co-rules over the Scorpio energy. So there's always a little bit of an intensity interacting with the ruler of the energy that, of course, the moon is in. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our passion, our desires, our drive, also our anger. He's in Gemini energy. So there's a lot of thinking going on. Yes, the Gemini energy has us weighing pros and cons, one choice point, one path, one direction over the other. We are mentally stimulated. We are, again, trying to piece together a path, a plan, a strategy on how we're going to move forward. But even more than that, we're starting to trigger some intense wants, needs, and desires. We're starting to realize the fuel that we're using, either passion and excitement and inspiration to fuel that fire or anger and agitation. At this point, whatever burns, a fire under our ass to get ourselves in a new position in a new environment we are going to double down on that fuel we are feeling very aggressive in needing to make the changes that we know that we need to make because we're tired of getting the same old same old 
The moon and Scorpio then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter because of course Mars and Jupiter working very closely together here, especially this week as we approach their conjunction. Both of them are in Gemini energy. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Gemini energy, pushing the boundaries of our mental plane of our thoughts, of our ideas, of our ability to receive new information, even if it does challenge our old understanding, our old belief, and actually make a change. The Gemini energy is immutable energy. When we're faced with information, data, and statistics in order to derail us from where it is that we thought we were moving into a new path, into a new project, into a new plan, we are going to make said change. The moon and Jupiter, we're building our self-esteem. We're building in self-confidence. We are willing to expand on our emotional realm with all of the good feels if it means hyping us up to a point where we are leaning more into one path, one decision, one choice point over the other. We do have a little bit of a tough interaction coming up though. Six 54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Venus interacting with Chiron, the wounded healer, who of course is retrograde in Aries energy. Now, this isn't going to be a total throwdown. It's not going to be a total dark and funky energy, but it is going to put us in a particular mood and attitude where we want to isolate. We don't really want to be social. We don't want to share our thoughts, our emotions with other people. We don't really want to share anything. We're a little bit confused. We're bouncing around. And in this particular, let's call it energy, the default program is the pull back. The default program is to create emotional distance space until we figure out what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire. Our guard, our wall is going all the way up, protecting our mental plane, our heart space, our identity until we feel a little bit more safe, secure and stable. We won't be sitting in that for too long, though. We do have the moon in Scorpio making a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries. So this tells me that we are having some light bulb moments. We're having a change of mind, a change of heart. We're seeing the path forward from a different lens, from a different set of eyes. We understand the initial steps that can now be taken to move on, to grow, to heal, to actually make some progress away from where it is that we're at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. The moon and Scorpio then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Of course, he's retrograde. So we're looking back. We're reflecting. We're reprocessing, reanalyzing. We're figuring out what needs to be rearranged, what needs to be restructured, redesigned in our lives. And in this Virgo energy, of course, we are focused on the details. Scorpio energy and Virgo energy is a dream team to figuring out what the actual problem is, how to come up with solutions, how we're going to move on, how we're going to move forward. Again, the moon being our emotions, Mercury being our mental plane, they're on the same page. We're in agreement. We are actually starting to see where there is an option, an opportunity for movement, for growth. We are putting ourselves in a situation to deal with life as it is. Matter of fact, we are essentially empowering ourselves, emotionally speaking, to have a new perspective, a new lens on our lives and where it is that we would like to go from here. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Scorpio making an awkward interaction with Neptune retrograde in that Pisces energy. So yes, it is water on water, but let's put it to you this way. If this was a super positive interaction, we would have clear, smooth waters. You know, when the ocean smooths out and it's like a mirror, it's so peaceful, it's so serene, it's very inspiring, very exciting. Well, this is kind of choppy waters. We're not full blown in a storm. There isn't chaos. There isn't, you know, waves hitting the boat, so to speak, but we're sure as hell not in stable waters. And what this is doing is it's kind of creating a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of panic, a little bit of confusion. And because of that, we're overwhelmed. We just want to check out. We don't want to think about things anymore. We sure as hell don't want to have to make any decisions. We are essentially just wanting to curl up in a ball and let this particular energy pass. <laughs>